Hey guys, Utah Steve here back for another video and this time a huge epic adventure at least for me Not so much for Murphy here. This is my son Murphy He'll be along on the trip. It's just the two of us. We are hiking to Kings Peak the highest peak in Utah the highest point in Utah and We're gonna take four days to do this. You can do it overnight if you're really pushing it but We're gonna enjoy the journey and uh, have a lot of fun in the process. So we're at Henry's Fork Trailhead the trailhead is over there at the end of the line of cars, and we're ready to go. You ready for this? Yep. He's very talkative. <laughs> Here's all our information. There are some fire restrictions for Dollar Lake and Henry's Fork Lake. Shown here on the map. We're not going to camp near those anyway. And we're always careful with fires. And here's our trail. We were just a little ways in, but I just noticed this leg. What is that? It's like some kind of horse or mule. Oh, it's not a horse. Maybe a cow, though. That's not a deer. It doesn't quite look like a moose. I guess it could be because of the color. But this is free range cattle area, too, so who knows? Look at that. A lot of that haze you see, unfortunately, is from forest fires, wildfires. Not up here, but all over the western United States. There's really good water sources up here, so we're not worried about water. Just wish the view was a little more clean, I guess. So because we have decided to take four days to do this, probably two or three day trip, we're um, sitting down to hydrate on the trail here. We've come from that direction. We're going that direction. <laughs> What's our elevation? We're at 9,649 feet and we have gained 157 feet. Yeah. Sense be, I mean, it, it's only and the first mile. I'm determined on this trip to keep hydrated. I, uh, I'm going to drink water like crazy because I have a bad habit of not drinking enough water when I hike. And so far, it hasn't been bad. That much of an altitude gain over that much of a distance. It's a pretty gradual slope. And neither one of us are really feeling too fatigued. I just wanted to stop and hydrate. And we're not in a race. We're not competing with anyone. We're just enjoying the journey, like I said, so... Party on, Wayne. <laughs> Back on the trail. That, my friends, is a drop off. Pretty amazing drop off. Probably a popular spot to stop. How far do you think we are? You want to check? Three miles. Three miles in. Now it's 28 miles round trip, so really we only have to do about 10 to 12 miles in and we'll be in the area that we want to be in. So we are a fourth of the way in.
Well, we've met up with the river. So we're gonna drink what water we have and replenish. That's all I got left. What about you? I have that and then another liter. What filter did you bring? Oh, the Katydine? Yep. <coughs> that one that you had for ages? Yeah. Oh, really? I bought a new filter for it. Charcoal oh. filter and ceramic. Cool. So, because the other one smelled gross. <laughs> Sat a long time with water inside of it. So. I've got my Sawyer squeeze. It's like show and tell. It's nice to be able to fill it up really fast too. Not have to wait for some trickle to go in there. This is probably a foot deep right here. Yeah. What's cool about this? You twist a wide mouth bottle onto it. Makes it that much easier to filter. Wow. Just gonna put that in here. Well, while he does that, I'm gonna sit here in the shade and drink some water. What does it do? Oh, the black stuff? Yeah. You're gonna dump that? No. Oh. You're just gonna drink it yellow? <laughs> There's nothing like river water that's been filtered, man. It's so good. Okay. So what I brought was my Sawyer, my Sawyer Mini, or not my Sawyer Mini, my Sawyer Squeeze. I replaced my Mini because this was easier to use, frankly. And it also screws right onto the head of the get your mind out of the gutter bottle. Okay, so you just screw it on. I'm sure you've seen this in 8,000 other videos. But... Oh, yeah. It's cold. I'm probably gonna put half of this in me and then fill it up again. I also have a couple of Sawyer bags in there I can fill, but I don't wanna carry them right now. That's more of you know when we're back at, when we have a camp set up and I also have a three liter bladder look at this river it's so just calm and serene and it's so green over there isn't that beautiful and we're just sitting here on the bank of the river just like grandma used to do look at that you could sit right there on that rock and fish most of the weight in my bag is food. I probably brought, I don't know, I'd seriously say 10 pounds of food. I brought MREs, I brought, I mean, we're talking four days, five technically, because we today's Monday, we go home Friday. Um, my base weight without food and water is roughly 27 pounds, which is kind of heavy, but it's several days, and I don't want to be uncomfortable. And the rest of it is, you know, 10 pounds of food, taking it up to 38. So I'm pushing 40 pounds here, which is way more than I like to carry, but it's not an overnighter, you know? And I, I wanted to eat good too. I didn't want to just eat berries and nuts for five days. And Murphy's got his Osprey pack over there, much lighter than mine. Uh, some of his gear is lighter than mine too. Um, that's how it goes. I have a few luxury items with me this time, Bluetooth speaker, uh, of course I have camera equipment and I bought a new uh, charger that's solar powered so it can recharge itself and then charge my camera, my phone, and the reason that, that of course added some weight and that weighs a pound so, you know, there are things like that that just add up. Okay, I got a liter of water in my belly. We've both rehydrated, or hydrated, whatever you want to call it. 
and I've got a fresh leader in my backpack and check this little guy out we're being stalked Look at him peek. He's cute. Anyway, now that we've been oh. properly entertained by the chipmunk over there on the tree, the squirrel, and other things zipping around here, we've got our water. We're heading toward Elkhorn Crossing from here, which is a, another couple miles or so. There's the sun. There's the, there's the sun. <laughs> what? There's the sun. Oh, oh, the sign too. <laughs> he said there's the sign and I thought he said sun because we've been in shade of trees for a long time. We have reached Elkhorn Crossing and this is where the trail splits two different directions with the same goal in mind, kind of. One goes that way. One goes that way. Dollar Lake. Dollar Lake, King's Peak. Someone wrote it in Sharpie. <laughs> Footbridge, Horse Ford, and Bear Lake. There's a lake up there. Look at those. Incredible mountains, covered in smoke. Well, I feel better, don't you? Yeah. I had to stop and eat a caffeinated cliff bar. I don't like cliff bars except for that chocolate fudge caffeinated one. And I took two Excedrin. <laughs> and so I think I should be good until we get camp set up wherever we decide that is. We decided that we're going to camp in this area for the first night. We have a couple hours, I'd say, until sunset, maybe two and a half. But we want to also enjoy the journey. I'll keep saying that because our goal isn't just the peak. Throw it down, just like <laughs> make sure it knows its place. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're going to camp in this area somewhere. We don't know where exactly yet. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to get up, eat breakfast, and hike all day. Well, not really all day, is it? It's another yeah. four miles to our next location. And we're just taking it a day at a time, really. So right now our priority in this gorgeous field is to find somewhere to camp. Probably amongst the trees. Yeah, right? I was thinking over there. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking too. Let's go see what's over there. I'm glad there's a rope because with this pack on, my balance isn't the greatest. Woo! Look at that. Look at that deep pool right there. I'm glad that rope was there. Yeah. Yeah, no, I kind of lost the balance. <laughs> like, walking on round logs with an unbalanced pack? That's sketchy. Yeah. So thank you, whoever put that rope there. Oh yeah, here's another sign. 
How? F well, we'll talk stats when we find a place to camp. Well, I guess we can get the dollar right. Oh, this is just the trail continuing. Well, there's the one. Oh, that's weird. It's confusing, huh? I have to look at my map. Yeah. But let's go this way. <sighs> oh, let's see. Horse Ford and West Fork Beaver Creek. Sometimes I say stuff and then I think about it. Yeah. A lot of times I say stuff and then I think about it. <laughs> it's one of my biggest problems. Trail footage. Trail footage. Dude, where are we going? So we're away from the river. We can still hear it, but we're a good 200 feet from it. And we found this clearing. That looks just right. This area right here, we're going to build a fire pit that we will not leave behind. So don't panic. We do leave no trace stuff. So our fire pit will be here so that we can sit on these rocks. We can have a fire here. And I just need to find a couple of good trees to hang my hammock from with no widow makers. But I can't wait to get this pack off. Yeah. I could take it off right now, actually. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. Backpacker strip show. Whoa. I am so glad to have that off my back. It's like getting divorced. We're currently at 10,336 feet. Yeah. Um, oh, just over 1,000 uh, feet elevation gain. From the trailhead. Yeah. Okay. And then we went six, six and a half miles exactly. Um, took us two and a half hours. Total hike time? Um, two and a half hours moving time, an hour and 40 minutes stop. So like three, <laughs> four hours. That's my fault. <laughs> so Most people can do this in a day. Not really, but yeah, I had to, man. I was draining bad. I was running out of energy and... You can tell I've been caffeinated now. It's starting to kick in. But uh, that's not bad. Yeah. You know, this is only day one. Sweet. I gotta find me some trees that won't kill me in my sleep. So Murphy had it pretty easy. He's already eating dinner. Uh, what are you having, by the way? Italian style pepper steak. Nice. Is it ready yet? I just added more water. Okay, so here's his tent. It's a virgin tent. It's never, ever been slept with before. <laughs> it, uh, he got this literally in the mail, what, two days ago? It's a one-person Alps mountaineering tent. What's it called? The Zephyr One. Zephyr One. He's got to check. Lynx One. The Lynx one. Yeah, this is a really affordable tent, but I'll tell you what, Alps Mountaineering makes really good products. Uh, if you're going lower end and on a budget like we usually are, Alps Mountaineering is a good way to go. So, here's a little tour. I'll just peek inside. Here we go. Just big enough for one person. It's funny. Let's look at that vestibule size. He can put his pack right there. It, it's funny how they advertise two-person tents for two people, but they really don't fit two people. They fit one person and some gear. But the one-person tent really does fit one person. I don't, I don't get it, but whatever. But he's got a good-sized vestibule. Your pack will fit in here, dude. Yeah. Pretty cool. I like it. 
It's got a little vent hole in the top, so it's breathable. It's got some nice luxury windows, so he can look out and see what bear is about to eat him. That's it. It's a skinny little thing. I like it. How much does it weigh? Just over three pounds. Three pounds, okay. Is it ready now? Yeah. How is it? It's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Mountain House rarely disappoints. Here's my setup. I went with the hammock instead of my Spitfire tent because I knew I'd be hiking a lot and I knew I'd want the pressure off my back at the end of the day. We have a ch uh, Chill Gorilla tarp. This is brand new. I've used it once. Uh, my last video at the Maples I used it and so it's the first time I've actually used it with my hammock. It's a 10 by 10 and I really like their products. This is also a Chill Gorilla bug net over my uh, well I'm not gonna unzip this right now but that's my Airy 30 from Outdoor Vitals. I put it in pod mode so I'll be sleeping snug inside it kept me from having to use an under quilt and an over quilt. I'm using just the pod. And then my hammock, of course, right here. Just your basic hammock from Amazon. Nothing fantastic, and I can't remember the name. Honest Outfitters. There you go. Maybe 25 bucks for that thing. And unfortunately, I brought the straps that don't have loops in them, so you can just slide it up and hook it in various loops. I had to wrap it multiple times around the tree, but this is a good spot, and I've got a nice porch. I think I'll get a uh, an old man chair and put it there and yell at the kids as they walk in my yard. Look at this pile of food I brought. This is why my pack was such a pain in the butt. This is breakfast and lunch, the ones with ramen in it for four days. Where's the other one? There's all my breakfast and lunch. And then we got MREs for dinners each night. Whatever came with those that I decided to bring. And then my various snacks. I did not want to go hungry and I don't think I will. So it's worth the extra weight. Otherwise my pack would be pretty light. The rest of this is just me unloading my pack to get to my sleeping supplies and right now I'm charging my phone on this solar charger so I'm starving I'm gonna pick one at random this one we're gonna sit down and have an MRE before Murphy finishes dinner hopefully that is sweet dude this is a pretty nice setup I'm pretty pleased with this Okay, so let's see which MRE I chose tonight. I could have labeled these, and one viewer suggested I write the MRE number on here, which is a really good idea, but uh, I just decided to surprise myself each night, and tonight it looks like chili macaroni. Chili mac. Beef jerky. We have marble pound cake. Dude, sweet. A cheese spread with jalapenos. Okay, I was debating on whether to bring this, but I thought it might be okay with the crackers and that I might be starving enough to eat it. I don't like the processed cheese stuff, but I'll choke it down. Then we've got uh, basically coffee, sugar, and cream. Is that the coffee? Yeah. Genitals. No, genial. <laughs> okay, and then here's our, our main entree. And then I've got some crushed red pepper I can ugh, sprinkle into it. The nice thing about eating all this is it's going to lighten my pack significantly. And then in the morning, I'll lighten it even more by eating even more of my food. And it's going to be amazingly easy to hike out of here. <laughs> so how is it? It's good. Can I take a uh, peek? Yeah. I know it's weird. But... Mmm. That looks nice. Did the but, rice cook? Yeah, like... This is the first time I've gotten like a mountain house with meat in it. Yeah. That it wasn't still like partially dehydrated. Like it huh. tastes pretty fresh. Cool. That's awesome. That's cool. I always have the opposite problem with mountain house. I put too much water in and it ends up like soup. Anyway, I'm going to stop filming and make my dinner. 
before the sun goes down. <laughs> so I've got the beef jerky here and I didn't realize it's in another package. So if you've watched my what's in my MRE videos, I usually remove any extra garbage I don't want to bring. Next time I have one of these it looks like it says balls, but it says <laughs> bull's beef snack. Thank goodness it's not made of that, right? So, that's garbage I didn't need to bring, but whatever, now I know. So we're gonna try this beef snack. I'm gonna let Murphy have some too, see what he thinks. It looks like a uh, dog treat, kinda. Tastes like a dog treat, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Except like sweeter. We know because we eat dog treats. <laughs> yeah, it's really sweet. Beef snack. <laughs> Do you like it? They're okay. It's not amazing, but it'll do. It's really salty. Mm-hmm. There's the main course cooking away over there in its cooking bag. I've got my Espit stove going. Heating up some water. It's going to go good with the uh, pound cake. Oh man. All of this tastes good when you're this hungry. That looks hot enough for me. That's the only thing I need this Espit cube for, really. There we go. Fogging up my glasses. <laughs> Woo, that cup is hot. I don't think I can drink it yet. It's too hot on my lips. It's nice, though, to have a warm, flavored drink. Mostly, I brought hot chocolate with me. I think I'm about meeting my quota for the rest of the year for caffeine today. Let's check the main course. It should be done. Our chili mac. Cardboard is nice and toasty. This definitely got heated through. Let's open this and see if it's uh, as good as I hope. I think I've had I have had this before. Oh, oh, that smells really good. Let's get our uh, red pepper packet. I like spicy food. There we go. I'm not sure how to hold this. Okay. I'm going to stir in the red peppers. Look at that. Now I ask you, was it worth hauling this food in on my back? Yep, it was. Ooh, just the right amount of kick, too. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. I need to be alone with my dinner. 
I've decided to forego the crackers and cheese for now. <clears throat> Maybe I'll eat it closer to bedtime. Maybe I'll just put it back in my snack bag and eat it later. We're going to have the pound cake. Look at that. If I could tell you how this smells, it's incredible. Very dense. Mm. <laughs> I need to be alone with this too. Good stuff. This is a great way to end a busy hiking day. What more could I ask for? Well, Murphy's back and he's decided he wanted the cheese and crackers and he said they're pretty good. I'm just not crazy about that cheese. These crackers are better than the, like the rye ones. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what made me decide to bring them as they were vegetable crackers, which sounded decent. Hmm. I don't mind the crackers, it's just that cheese. Mm. That goo. <laughs> <laughs> well dinner is over the sun is getting lower and that means the bugs are coming out Murphy and I have assembled a fire pit for the night we will dismantle this in the mornings uh, but right now we're going to get a fire going it's starting to cool off it's not really cold but uh, we're definitely going to need the smoke and the heat to keep the mosquitoes away I'm really glad I brought that bug net. Well, that didn't take too long. And I'm not just saying that because I didn't film us making it. <laughs> a lot of dry pine needles. A whole lot of dry firewood all through here. Don't even have to really look for it. It's just all over this place. So we're being very careful because things are really dry. And we're not near the prohibited areas. You know, Murphy, when he was little, he was a total pyro. <laughs> I couldn't keep that kid out of a campfire. Nice. Yeah. Like, couldn't be in a better place. <laughs> All right. Food bag is hung. Well, no bugs. Haven't noticed any. Yeah. There were some at first, but the sun has gone down. All is quiet in the forest. Except that river. So here's something sad and pathetic. <laughs> it is now 8.30 at night. And Murphy and I are about ready for bed. <laughs> We're tired. <laughs> We're just letting the fire kind of burn itself down for a while we'll probably go to bed at like nine I got the trail camera set up that's another piece of the weight in my backpack that was worth bringing even though it weighs probably a pound aimed towards the campfire area Not so much towards our sleeping area, but this is more likely the area where we'll get some action, if we get any. At least I remembered it this time. So, Murphy gets tired, he gets very quiet. He just doesn't say much. When I get tired, I just say stupid stuff that I think makes sense at the time, but doesn't later. 
Anyway, it's been a fantastic day. We are going to call it a night soon. But I'll probably say goodnight from inside the cocoon there once I figure it out and get settled. I've never slept in there in pod form. So it'll be zipped up to my head, wrapped around my head. It'll be interesting. Well guys, it is nine and it is dark, not quite dark enough for the stars all to be out. I am in my pod. As you can see, I'm covered in top. And my bottom is nicely covered as well. This is the first time I've used it like this, so I'm excited about it. Murphy's just climbed in his tent. Say goodnight, Murphy. And uh, we're done. We're toast. We both just decided we'd had enough of today. Yeah, it's time to get some freaking sleep. So guys, day one is over. We will see you in the morning.
can't explain I might as well be dead And I'm not the kind you're looking for I can see it in your eyes And I ask myself what do I do this for It should come as no surprise It's a desperate It's a desperate need.